heavens, you made it in time. There's a storm heading this way within the hour, and I need you to plow right into the center of it. Of course you do. Do I want to know why? I need to attach sensors to your rig's winch, so time is of the essence. I'll explain while you're on your way to the top of Shack's Peak. Alright then, get in your rig. I'll fill you in as we go. Alright, you should see coordinates on your hut based on where I expect the eye of the storm. Get moving. So what's the skinny, Doc, since when are we storm chasers? Since I heard every crewman at Coronas buzzing about the big quest for pure tea energy. While that fool Kenny is playing mad scientist with the acrid, he's utterly failed to see the storm patterns for the clue they are. If Braddock had just bought me some more time with Nevik, I'd have been able to prove there's low impurity tea energy within the storms, and lots of it. If storm is even the right word for them. The storms don't fit any natural weather pattern I've seen. They come and go so quickly, with none of the wind signature you'd expect of an Emperor-class atmospheric disturbance. It's as if they somehow have a trajectory. They do seem to come out of nowhere. No, James. Just the opposite. Oh, Doc, you may be blowing my mind a little here. A perennial danger. But with your help, it's time to stop guessing and start hoarding data. Those custom sensors I installed on your winch are going to run a host of tests to help us figure out precisely what we're dealing with once and for all. With a little luck, we'll find some way to help Corona stay standing in the process. All right. Not like it'll be the craziest thing I do today. Procedure in progress. Cargo successfully docked.
Okay, Doc, I'm in position. And looks like I'm right on time. Fire your winch at the tower and give it some time to collect the data. Your rig's going to act like a grounded relay for lightning. Don't worry, you should be safe. strange about these acrid. They're different from the others I've seen. A different hue. Brighter, maybe. Well, don't forget to use your DNA tagger on them. They could be part of the puzzle, too.
claims. Come look at the contaminant readings. They're practically non-existent. This may be the purest reading we've ever seen. The prize Coronis is looking for is in the very thing trying to knock them down a crevasse. You're telling me these storms are somehow powered by the purest tea energy on the planet? You sure that's good news? Good or bad remains to be seen. But if we find where the storms are coming from... Maybe we find the mother load of pure tea energy. And while Nevek uses it to solve the energy crisis on Earth, we get rich and get home. Sure. And also lay eyes on one of the rarest, most mysterious wonders of the universe. If you're into that sort of thing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that too. I'll take some time to fully pass all the data we just took in. I'll let you know what comes of it. Meanwhile, I hate to send you off empty-handed. Gail here. I got that part repaired for you if you want to come pick it up now. It was a bitch.
I'm Narissa Rock. And I'm Arthur Beagle. You're listening to GPR, Galactic Public Radio. Broadcasting and podcasting around the solar system, thanks to the generous support of Neo Venus Construction and listeners like you. On tonight's broadcast, a look back at the Kettleman Mining Colony 30 years after the depletion. Quarterly energy figures are out. Is the crisis worsening? And austerity riots continue to spread. What protesters are demanding now? All this and more on tonight's All in All. There you go, dude. Thanks for helping me keep my ancient water purifier controller skills sharp. Busting out the welding goggles. Doodles. Welcome back. That ammo adds severe burn damage if you can hit them acrid sweet spots. Their blood just ignites and stays burning. Instead of shattering into shrapnel, these shells ricochet when they hit, but only once, so be smart about the angle you fire them at. Instead of shattering into shrapnel, these shells ricochet when they hit, but only once, so be smart about the angle you fire them at. Nice. She'll pack a bigger punch now, though the trade-off's a touch more recoil. It's well worth it in my humble opinion. That ought to tone down your recoil quite a bit. Smart purchase, no question. See now, that's how I know you're a connoisseur. Throws a straight line and blows up on contact, you're gonna like it. See there, that's the stuff. Great for sniping targets. See you around. Wait a minute, this is my hunting rifle. It's been in my family for generations. Well, I thought I'd lost in the supply crash on my first day. What? No, Jim. This was sold to me recently by LaRoche. Said it was in his family for generations. Sorry, but if you're, if you're wanting your money back... No worries, Bertie. I'm just glad to have her back. Mr. Jim, Dr. Kovach here. I have another contract for you if you're interested in continuing to sublimate your bloodlust. Come see me.
Could take some torque drivers and plant some helical piers at B-26 and K-22 instead. That should ease off some of the lateral load. I'm worried about the pressure. Well, we could take the gauges off A-5 and 6 since those are more or less stabilized. But I'm telling you, they're load-bearing. Throw some plates on there, anchor them down with cable lock, and we're going.
last batch of samples was as fruitless as the first. Maybe more fruitless, if that's possible. But I can only drown my sorrows in more science. Let's try another breed.